Today, we're sharing about a new hidden gem we just discovered in Southern California. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. Tamara, we just returned from another trip together. It's kind of funny. I feel like sometimes we go forever without seeing each other. And then all of a sudden we've seen each other both January and February, back-to-back trips practically. So good to see you recently. And now we're back online chatting from coast to coast. I know. And and then I'm excited because we're going to get to see each other again in April. And I have to tell you, like just having that one week in California that we just spent together, it just brightened up winter so much for me. I think it needs to be an annual thing, right? I'm I'm good with that for sure. I was definitely happy to escape the cold and rain of Seattle and I know you were escaping a brutal cold snap in the northeast. So I, I'm all for signing up for more February, you know, sun sun escapes. Yeah. And there's just something so special about spending time together. And, you know, it's so hard these days to kind of get together with friends, you know, even if they live nearby, like coordinating schedules, you know, you tend to have these little snippets of time, like let's take a walk together, let's meet for coffee, something like that. And you try to like squeeze it all in and you're like talking, talking, talking. Right. And then it's just so nice when you can travel together because it gives you like more time. You're like having new experiences together. Plus you're catching up, you know, on life and you're just kind of sometimes getting into discussions or topics that you might not even, you know, otherwise like touch on. It's just, I just feel like it's such a great thing for friendships. And I know that we're kind of privileged at this stage in our lives to have a little bit more flexibility in our schedules. And obviously with what we do, we can just naturally, you know, travel a bit more, but it would be something I would just encourage people to kind of think about with their friends and trying to plan like a girlfriend getaway or a girl's trip. I always like, do you call it a girl's trip or a girlfriend getaway? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, it is a good question. I mean, and it doesn't, I mean, I don't know. It's it's a good question, but I agree 100% that I think it's really good for, especially moms, I would say, but women in general, you need to connect with your friends and make time for yourself where you're not responsible for someone else or, you know, like taking care of someone else. And you can really take that time to just be in the moment and you know, rediscover your passions and things that you enjoy. And like you and I taking 8 million uh, sunset pictures because we both just love that moment of the day. And <laughs> I think there's... Without anybody like sighing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one in a hurry, no no deadlines, you know. So, no, I, I agree. I think it's a great thing to do. So, we should ju- definitely tell our listeners kind of where we discovered and where we went. Because I don't think, you know, a lot of people think of Southern California and we all know like LA and all those different places. But this was kind of a little hidden gem. And I think you and I both fell in love with it. Yeah, I will say, so Kim and I just went to Oceanside, California, and it is about 100 miles south of LA and about 40 miles north of San Diego, and then also not far from Anaheim and the whole Orange County area. So there's tons of different ways to get there or places to fly in. And as soon as we pulled into town, we were like, I'm going to like it here. It just had that feeling like right away. Maybe it was just the sunshine, but but I could tell like, you know, right away that we were going to like it. And I I love that it has that kind of quiet laid back feel without being one of these, like, I don't know, there's so many places that you hear about for a girlfriend getaway. And it's just like a little overdone, a little crowded. You might see like people with their sashes and their bachelorette parties. and <laughs> This yeah. is not that kind of vibe at all. And right. it's just easy to get to. I mean, I flew into LA. I found this amazing flight deal um, where it was only like $200 to fly from Boston to LA, and which is kind of what prompted the whole trip. And then you were able to fly into San Diego. But then there's also like all those Orange County airports that you could potentially right. fly into. But if you don't want to have a car, because like everyone's kind of scared of like driving around LA area, especially, and it is like, you know, a lot of highways and things to deal with. If you don't want to have a car, you can just hop on the Amtrak and there's like yeah. an Amtrak surf liner, I think it is, that goes yep. right into downtown, like right next to the the nicest hotels. So it's so super easy to get to. 
Yeah. And I think they were even saying like, if you do fly out, you know, or if you do fly into San Diego or LA, you can easily take an Uber or, you know, bus if you're really doing the budget thing and get to the Amtrak stations pretty easily in both of those airports. And then you just hop on the surf liner and you're able to come in. And like you said, the the Amtrak drop off is right there in the heart of Oceanside. So it makes it very convenient if you're trying to be car free. Oceanside, you know, before I went, I had talked to someone from the tourism board and I knew a couple of things about it. Number one, I knew that they had a pier and it was on the ocean. <laughs> I was, it would make sense. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then I knew that it was home to where the Top Gun house was, which is like right. the <laughs> house that was featured in the uh, original Top Gun movie as where the character Charlie, who was played by Kelly McGillis, where she lived. And honestly, like that's about, I knew it was kind of near some military area areas like Camp Pendleton and there was some shopping and things like I really didn't know a lot about it so when I like was kind of expecting I don't know like I wasn't sure what I was expecting from a beach town but I was it wasn't expecting it to feel just so much of a cool vibe to it like I had so many yeah. like really nice hotels and upscale restaurants but then it was also diverse and it had a lot of like more casual places so yeah I feel like when you when you when you're in Southern California, like each town has this like different vibe to it. And some of them are like, that's a, that's a beach, like surfer town. And that this is like a very upscale town and everything's like high end boutiques and fancy dining and stuff. And this was yep. kind of somewhere in between, you know, like more on the, on the surf town, but, but still like plenty to draw you there if you weren't surfing. Yeah. Would you agree? I would agree. I think it was, I would, the word I would use is just approachable. I felt like it was very approachable for all walks of life in a way. I mean, there were great restaurants where you're going to spend, you know, 20 some odd bucks, but there was also enough places where it's just hole in the wall, go grab a coffee, grab, you know, some tacos, grab, just, I felt like it was just very approachable. And it felt like there were locals that were there as well as not a lot of tourists, but definitely some tourists because there's two massive hotels. So it just had a nice mix. I I was really, I just feel like it was approachable. It wasn't too ostentatious or luxury that you felt like you were going to be spending an arm and a leg, but it also was not kind of, kind of the rougher, grungier kind of coastal towns that I'm used to a lot in Oregon and Washington, which is a lot of hole in the wall and just kind of um, industrial feels. So it was very much not like that. So I really liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think, I think I one of the big thing, like as we were talking to people, we kind of learned a little bit about the history, and we learned yes, that yeah. a couple of decades ago, it was really it was more like rough and tumble down, st- yes. down town, and it had more of especially because of the you know, blue collar and military feel. Yeah, so yep. you you didn't have quite the same thing that you have today, but it's been really. I don't know if you'd say revitalized, but it's had a, a definitely renaissance. And so with that comes these like new properties, these new hotels. And I think that that's part of what gives it this feeling is that you have these new properties and new restaurants that have this like beautiful modern aesthetic, you know, versus kind of sometimes when you've had the beach towns, you get like the motels and stuff like that. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. I feel like that's, it actually kind of reminded me a little bit of like Gulf Shores and Orange Beach in Alabama. Oh. Just just in the way that it's like a beach town that has like a lot of, you know, fresh, new kind of feel to it and really good food spots and stuff. But yeah. 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 The food scene, I think, was really, there was some, it was definitely on point for the food scene. I think I just want to go and ahead and kind of build on what you were just saying, because I think one of the coolest experiences for both of us was getting to talk with the founder of the Sunset Market. So Oceanside has this thing called a Sunset Market that they do every Thursday night. And of course, it's at Sunset, <laughs> if that's not obvious enough. So I think it runs, what is it, from four to nine, five to nine, something like that. I think it was five um, to nine. Okay, five to nine, because they also place. have Thursday Farmer's Market the same day, of course. And the Thursday Farmer's Market is earlier that afternoon, and then everything gets cleaned up. And like you and I were chuckling in some booths, we think they just moved to a new spot down the street. But the Sunset Market really was the brainchild of this organizer, Kim, and we were able to tour with him and his passion and love for the fact of what this market represents. And then understanding what it did for the city of Oceanside, attracting, you know, like a tourist vibe and upscale properties was really quite interesting. I'm sure you have some stuff to share about that. I just couldn't believe that as we were walking through it, you know, we saw them setting up earlier in the day. And as we were starting to walk through, I couldn't believe how many people were there. And you and I were saying to each other, like, 
they bring in this crowd every week. Every, like this yeah, is what like one a weeks festival. A year. Yeah. Yeah. So the festival hopes to draw in and Agreed. they're, you know, like a once a year kind of thing. So it just shows like what a community it is and like how important it is for the community. And it draws from, I think you said like, you know, 60 to 90 miles away, people will drive yeah. in for it. So it's really, it is a thing to see. So if you're going for a weekend, I would say like go in on Thursday afternoon so you can be there for that and just stay an extra day because... You know, it was great. We had some really delicious food. Really delicious food. And that's one of the cool things they make a point of is making it a very, I don't know, melting pot of different cuisines. And they try and really make sure to support maybe, you know, kind of like the food truck vendor idea, but people who maybe don't have restaurants or don't have food trucks, but have this amazing cuisine and these great local recipes or something like that, that they can share with large groups and helping train some of these people on how to feed at a, you know, kind of large mass limited resources kind of, you know, under a tent canopy. It's amazing what some of those guys could do. I mean, that, I still think, what was it, a Berea? I can't even remember what it was that I had that was like the crispy carne asada, or it wasn't carne asada, was it? I think it might have been El Pastor, but yeah, it was so delicious. El Pastor, Something thank special you. that like, he did for car- you. I was like, yeah. what's the other one? Yeah. <laughs> and oh my goodness, it was so delicious. And it was just really cool. And then I know you, I mean, the you guys, you had some Thai, some pad, pad thai, thai, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it's it really, amazing. you know, whenever I see a, a, a fair or festival like that, I'm always like, oh, is the food going to be all like fried this and fried that kind of just like the same old yeah. stuff that you would see at every kind of street fair. And this was not, they definitely take a lot of time to curate those different vendors from food from around the world. And even like the pad thai that I got, they were like, you can pick from pad thai from like four different the regions. Northern, of yes. Thailand. Yeah. So that, that was, was so cool. Super interesting. Yeah. And I saw like an oyster truck. There were bao buns. There was somebody like grilling giant steaks. There was, yep. we had beignets. Like it was just such a yeah. good variety. So yeah, definitely cool. kind so. of like worth going, worth, worth making sure you're there on a Thursday if you go to yeah. Oceanside. I agree. And I do think, you know, we were there mostly during the weekday and I'm sure that attracted, like it allowed us to have a little bit more laid back feel because it sounds like they definitely probably get weekend city traffic from San Diego or LA of people coming to kind of spend their weekends there. So if you're wanting to avoid the crowds, I think doing a midweek uh, trip and including a Thursday is definitely works really well. Yeah, because it was nice and chill for us. I will say the other, I'm sure you were going to get to it too, but the other kind of amazing, mind-blowing <laughs> experience that we had in Oceanside was when we went on a dolphin and whale watch. And so I think both of you, you and I are, you know, we've, we've both done whale watches. And yeah. so I was, you know, jaded. happy to go. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, maybe I'll see something that I don't see in the Atlantic, you know, because I haven't done one in the Pacific, you know, but just, I kind of like getting out on the water, a chance to, you know, be on a boat in the sunshine. It's all good. And so we start heading out and he starts talking about dolphins and how there's more dolphins in Southern California than like the whole rest the of the entire world. Combined. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and how, you know, they have these, you know, for every dolphin you see, there's like six that you don't see. And so we're starting <laughs> to then see a couple of dolphins and you and I have been on a trip, even in like the Florida Keys, yeah. where we saw like three dolphins and we were like, oh, you know, and everyone's rushing to that. the side of the boat and you're so excited. This was yeah. insane. And you guys, probably some of you saw it on our Instagram, but they, we ran into a mega pod of dolphins, yeah. which was like thousands of, it's over a thousand dolphins. Over a thousand, yeah. And... It was, they were just, it was like the sea was just boiling. It was just churning with with dolphins just jumping everywhere. Everywhere. Swimming next to the boat. It's like, you didn't really need to fight for a position to be able to see no. they were <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it was, was one amazing. of like the best wildlife experiences I've ever had. I, I just couldn't believe, it was one of those things where I'm like, you cannot wipe the smile from my face because just seeing animals like that makes me happy, you know? It was, it was just insane. It was so crazy. They were just everywhere. And then, you know, when we were leaving at that one time and they were talking about the stampede and it was just like this amazing, like wall of dolphins all jumping, like in the same, like kind of line of 
line of it was thought crazy. or whatever, and they were all coming towards yeah. us. It was just awesome. And I actually really enjoyed, we went on, I can't even remember, Oceanside Adventures, right? Is that the one we yes. went on? And I remember when we had lined up, we were like, oh, it's, you know, it's going to be kind of crowded. But like you said, I mean, that was a perfect experience where it was not a problem finding you know, getting a view and being able to move around and uh, the boat was nice. And I think the whole experience was just good. It was a nice like kind of catamaran boat. I guess it was catamaran, wasn't it? I can't even remember now, but very open seating at the bow yeah, and, and everything. So guides, I mean, you yeah, chatted for a while really with one of their kind of naturalist guides and tons of information about, you know, yeah. about the wildlife. And so you always worry about yeah, that a little bit when you're going on some type of adventure like that. I mean, I know that there's rules about how close you can get. And this, he made sure to tell us like yes. the dolphins love like swimming next to our boat and like being in front of it and playing and like, you cannot hit them. They you will always like stay yep. ahead. And cause you know, it was something the that you're like, oh my gosh, like, they're right underneath. Yeah. I know. I was a little worried about, it. I'm like, and we weren't necessarily just like idling along, like he was driving normal and these, you know, the dolphins all came and they were just playing and, and they were saying like the echolocation helps them know exactly like where the boat is and where the boat's going. And so there's no danger. And I thought, oh, you know, cause yeah, otherwise you would, I'm glad they told us that cause I would have been so stressed, but yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was definitely one of the highlights. And I loved how, I think this is another shout out for Oceanside is that we, to go to our whale watching, we needed to go to the Harbor, which is a little ways up, but we were able to easily walk along the little pier ocean front. And then we wove through a neighborhood a couple times to be able to get to the harbor, but it was not a bad walk at all. I mean, it was, a, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, but yeah, it was like maybe I think, a mile. Yeah. It's just so, I loved how everything was so easily accessible to us. The whole trip, everything we did, we went, you know, onto one side of the town and we went and saw museums and restaurants and then we did a wine tasting and then we were able to also walk down to the harbor where we could have rented, it was a little chilly, but we could have rented kayaks. It was really popular there, but we did the whale watching and it was just, it was kind of fun. And I just liked how everything was so easily accessible. Yeah, once we parked the car, because we did drive, because I had already had a car from when I was up in LA, we didn't touch it again until we left. And I loved yeah. it because I was not a fan of driving the, the big rental car that I had. So I was more than happy yeah. to just leave it in the garage. And it was all good. Well, and you mentioned wine tasting. And I feel like that was something that is a bit of a surprise because you don't really think about Southern California for the wines as much. I mean, I know that there's like Santa Barbara and Temecula and other places that have, but mm -hmm. there... There were quite a few, or at least a couple of um, like wine tasting rooms, but then a, yep. a few breweries as well, yeah. and then like cocktail bars. So they have this whole thing called O Sips. So yeah, Oceanside, really cool. they kind of shortened to O Side, and so they have O Sips, and basically it's. It's kind of like a little website where you check in to different places that are participating, and you can get a discount, maybe like a. Did we have like yeah, a I free? Think we saved like yeah, we got um, the free wine. Buy one get one free wine one. tasting yep. flight. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and others were like little discounts, and then if you check in, in enough places, you can also if you stop by their visitor center, get some prizes like a coaster or a tope, or tumbler or something like that. But you know, it was kind of a, a cool concept to get people to explore a little bit more, and I was really you know pretty impressed by the scene when it comes to, you know, if you wanted to try some wine or beer or cocktails and also like the decor of all the places that we went into. Again, oh it God. felt like very, like just on trend, like on yep. point, like some of them had yep. live music, some entertainment. It didn't, nothing felt like run down or hole in the wall. Like if you wanted to find those places, I'm sure the Marines that come down, like they can find those. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, there's lots of barber shops. I will say that. Like there's yeah. right next to the surfing museum is also like a military supply store. So it is kind of funny. You can definitely see that it's a military town, but I would say otherwise you, you know, you would never really know. Yeah. Well, and you and I never got to go back to the axe throwing bar that we walked by. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. For a minute. <laughs> that, that looked like you it was a happening place that one night. <laughs> if there were some, if there were some people from the military in there, I would have been pretty embarrassed with my throw. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's but, probably fine. But yeah, no, that that part was pretty impressive. I mean, you mentioned yeah. you know, food already. Did you have any favorite places that we went to when it comes to food or drinks? Um, I think it was all really cool. I would say. 
three things that shot out in my mind are just rooftop bar experiences. Like even, Mm -hmm. you know, we saw sunset two times. The one was the Coco Cabana on top of the roof where we stayed. Um, And then the other one was the rooftop Mission Pacific Hotel, which is just, I mean, the fact that we got to have yoga rooftop, you know, there by the pool, which was probably and just our our teacher was amazing the atmosphere was amazing it was the perfect way I think for both of us to start our day so we had that and then later that night we went with our friend Mary and had drinks up there for sunset and it was just so good so I would say rooftop sunset bar drinks is amazing there and then probably I really liked the switchboard with the Hawaiian fusion I loved their Brussels sprouts they were so yummy and then the lettuce wraps I had were just on point so probably those but I also loved the craft coast taco place so yeah but what about you yeah, the switchboard to me was so fun because number one, it's just this tiny little place that's part of the Finn Hotel, which was a site where they used as a communication center during World War II. So they actually have some old switchboards there and that's where it got its name. But the food to me, like I, I don't have Hawaiian fusion at home, you know, like we're, yeah, we're yeah. very East Coast, you know, like so we have different influences that I think that you get on the West Coast. And so that to me was really exciting. But I am just such a sucker for brunch. And I just loved oh, the yeah. different like brunch places that yeah. we went to. Like everything from there was toasted gastro brunch. Toasted which was, awesome. was they had, you know, really everything from all kinds of toasts, obviously, to like we had stuffed French toast and then there were eggs benedict. And Lots the of crazy stuff. mimosas. So, Multiple yeah, I was gonna say some good, options. Yeah. Some good brunchy mm-hmm. cocktails there. But even just like the bakery that was up the street from where we stayed, Petite Madeleine, they had like an amazing, okay. all I had was a croissant because I was like, I'm so full. But the croissant was amazing. It was just like so delicious. So yeah, yeah I, my I think croissant breakfast definitely if you're a brunch amazing. person. Yeah, you're, you're and I loved Piper. There. Like talking about your decor on point. Like we had brunch at the Seabird restaurant at their restaurant Piper, and I just I loved how it looked in there. I loved their lobby; it was so beautiful. So another one. Yeah, of those, I agree. Brunch I would, was you know, we, and then we got parlor donuts that one time, which could count as oh brunch too. Sort of. Those donuts. <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking of all this food we ate. <laughs> I loved those donuts. They're kind. They're a layered donut, kind of like a cronut. And so it's not as cakey or heavy, and I I loved it. Yum! I actually picked up a couple, and then and Hannah and I had that after our long day in Disneyland, yeah. <laughs> which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, yeah. I, well, we mentioned a couple of hotels. I think we should also just kind of shout out some of the properties that we enjoyed, and that, and then also like where we stayed, so that there's lots of options for people. I agree. Yeah, I think that, you know, if you're looking for luxury and oceanfront views, there's definitely two amazing, you know, properties right there. And that's the Mission Pacific and the Seabird. But we were put at kind of more of a boutique, very urban feel property that was a little more inset in town. And it was perfect location for the um, sunset market for sure. So you can go ahead and share about that, Tamara. Yeah, all I mean, all of them are really within very short walking distance of each other, so yeah, they're really convenient. Sure. But we stayed at the Brick Hotel, and so that's a boutique property. I think like ten rooms. There's no mm-hmm. official check-in desk. It's like self check-in, but it's in historic buildings. So you have those exposed brick walls and just you know like really nice decor, like big sunny rooms, you know, spacious. Like if you're looking for that boutique hotel feel, I would just say like. You may, if you are a light sleeper, there's a couple of tips that I would give you. One would be maybe not to get the room that's facing the front because that lets in a lot of sunshine. So you might want to like bring in a uh, sleep mask or something. And the other is that there you have they have a rooftop bar and then right behind it there's a brewery and then right next to it there's a cocktail bar. So you definitely get a lot of late night music and talking and things. So if you're like an early to bed person, you probably also want to bring some earplugs but I mean I yep. love the decor and and they also have an oyster bar oyster restaurant bar in the on the first the, floor yeah yeah so there, it's it's just such a great location and like really you know beautiful decor cool vibes yeah. um nice people the little bit that we did interact with them so anyway just slightly different feel than I think maybe your more traditional like upscale and one thing I want to mention when I looked things up about the seabird is I saw it's a Hyatt property Oh, okay. So just for people that are looking to use Hyatt points, Point. there's also a Wyndham right there in town. I, I saw the Wyndham there, there, yeah. Yeah, a couple of other chain properties. And they're also really big on vacation rentals. So I feel like a lot of times for families or for groups, you know, like a girlfriend getaway, 
a vacation rental is really nice because then you can cook and you can hang out together, you know, all in one main space. So there's definitely tons of different options depending on what your budget and interests are. And I would say even like the Wyndham or there is a Spring Hill Suites there for Marriott people. But like you said, the Mission Pacific and the Seabird, you know, you're still Oceanside and there's a train track that runs there as well. So I think no matter where you stay, you have to be mindful. I mean, I experienced this in Santa Barbara where they're like, oh yeah, we're right next to the ocean, but we're also right next to the train track. So um, you just have to be aware that if you are a sensitive sleeper, it's whenever you're staying in certain environments, it's always a good idea to, you know, wear earplugs. I don't do well with earplugs, but I'm trying to do better about like white noise machines and stuff like that. But yeah, it, I think I just loved, you know, the brick hotel. I thought it was a great feel. I, they didn't have coffee in the rooms, but they had a coffee Keurig down in the lobby. And so I could go get my morning fix every morning. And, um, that was really awesome. I'm sure Tamara appreciated that I wasn't, you know, trying to smuggle the coffee maker into the bathroom, um, at 6 a.m. <laughs> while she was still trying to sleep. So. Because <laughs> she, Tamara, does, I don't know how many of you know this, I'm a coffee addict and it's not even like good coffee. I just need the caffeine fix in the morning kind of to get my day started. And Tamara cannot stand the smell of coffee. So when we share rooms, I always feel really bad and guilty when I need the coffee fix. So, but anyways, yeah, we, I just loved it. And so I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for a getaway or even, you know, it doesn't have to just be girlfriend getaway. You know, it's a great couple getaway. And, you know, like the, we forgot to mention the California Surf Museum is also right there. And, you know, it looked like it was going to be kind of this tiny, little spot. They have some really cool exhibits in there. Like they have Bethany Hamilton's board that um, has the shark bite. And they also have some stuff from Kelly Slater. And so if you at all know anything about surfing, it's kind of a cool, cool thing there as well. Well, it's definitely a destination for surfers. We we learned that the USA Surfing Team Federation, whatever, that they use <laughs> yeah. Oceanside as the, one of their training pr- grounds. <laughs> training, yeah, yeah, but they have really yeah. good waves, so it's definitely yeah. really popular. And like, there's different months where they have either amateur or professional. Yeah competitions as well, which I can imagine would be super cool to watch. You know, well, we just had fun even, yeah, we walked out on the pier and there's like always surfers around the pier. So if you, it's really fun. It's like another form of people watching. It's like surfer watching, you know, so it was definitely cool. So hopefully we've kind of inspired you to check out Oceanside. It was definitely new to us and it was it's a place I'd be happy to go back to. So I, I just love you know, discovering little places like that. But, you know, after we left Oceanside, we drove up to Anaheim and we had what came together as like a totally awesome day at Disneyland. And it all started because when I got that cheap flight out to California, I was thinking, well, what if I flew Hannah from Arizona over to California to see, you know, so that we can hang out together. And, you know, I found a cheap flight then and she had signed up for a trip to Disneyland in November with her school, but then got strep throat at the last minute and couldn't go. So I was like, oh, would you want to come out and meet me and go to Disneyland? And then, you know, Kim, you were coming to meet me. And I was like, well, you you know, do you want to go to Disneyland with us? Because I know you're trying to kind of get down there more and, and cover a lot of Disneyland. And I'm like, we can be your guinea pigs of what it's like to be a first timer at Disneyland. And then last minute, we had another person join us. Yeah. So it was so cute because we had been talking about, you know, the trip and it was literally, I think Monday. And I had mentioned that I really wished Lizzie could join us. And especially because Tamara and I are not thrill ride people. And, you know, Hannah was definitely going to a little is a little more open to riding some of the rides. And so I looked at flying Lizzie out, but I saw that the airfare was going to be like 600 plus dollars. And I just didn't think that that made a lot of sense. And then Tamara made this slight comment about, oh, too bad. Do you not have any points that you could use? And I totally forgot about like all the airline points that I just, you know, I kind of hoard them for, you know, epic trips. But I got online and looked and I was able to get Lizzie to come in and it worked out that uh, I could try and get her in almost the same time as Hannah. Unfortunately, her flight got delayed, but we were able to uh, locate a Shake Shack and get Hannah some food before we picked up Lizzie in LA. And then we headed into the parks with them the next day. It was so fun. I mean, I'm so glad that it worked out like that because number one, it's like, obviously we're good friends. It's nice that our daughters finally get to meet because they've heard so much about each other. I mean, they're they're born in the same month. You know, they have so much in common in so many ways. And we've, you know, shared so many things over the years. So it's just nice for them to get a chance to hang out. But then because, yeah, Lizzie likes riding the coasters and I do not. And so I'm 
very excited. And I was more than happy just to stand there while they went on ride after ride. Cause just to see them, you know, being happy. And yeah. Kim was like the awesome mom in that she was constantly like scoring us the next genie pluses. Like <laughs> it was really funny when, you know, you had, we had linked all of our tickets together, even though we obviously purchased them separately, but then we'd go through the turnstiles and I'm like, Kim, did you get all of us? You know, so it was like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was like following around mom. And, it, and it's really funny because I never get to be in the situation where I'm not like the one I leading. I think that. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> so, do realize that because even in our own trips, Tamara takes the point so many times and I always feel a little guilty about it. So I'm glad I could give you a short little like couple of hours of you getting to relax and just follow the leader. <laughs> Yeah. It was funny though, a couple of times that we split up and you're like, oh, we're here. And I'm like, okay, you realize we don't really know where that yeah. is right? <laughs> because you know, you guys have yep. obviously been so many times and we'd been to Disney World a few times, but not, you know, we're not like hardcore Disney people. And then we had never been to Disneyland. So this was all, all new to us. And I know that you love your Disneyland and I will say that you've convinced me why. I I feel like especially for someone that is only going for one day to be able to maximize it by the parks being like right across from each other like that and just like much more accessible feeling. And I actually just love the fact that I could stay off site for like a third of the price and walk there without having to worry about (laughs) paying for parking or waiting for a shuttle that comes once an hour at this amount of time and lining (laughs) up and like all of that hassle that comes with Disney World because Disney World, I don't think we've ever stayed on site. We've stayed in partner hotels like from Disney Springs or ones that had a shuttle, but we've never actually stayed like on site. And even if you do, it just still depends on what park you're going to, whether or not that's easy, (laughs) you know? So it was, it was definitely a joy. We spent 15 crazy long hours, which I think for you, you're, you were like, no, this is not how I do it. But exactly. I mean, your daughter was driving a lot of that though. Yes. <laughs> she oh, was very yeah. happy to do it. She was so happy. It's like Lizzie's one of her favorite places. She is a little Disney lover. She just loves the rides. She loves the theming. It's so funny because she literally just has joy when she's in that park and knows that she's doing something fun next. It's it's really funny how much it resonates with her. And, you know, I I'm sorry if that makes us like dumb or low class to some people, but for some reason for her, it's like Don't her little that. joy place. No. So I, it's it's like, like, you know, it, I know some people judge happy. Disney and think people who go to Disney are just stupid and they're wasting money because it is stupid expensive. Like you and I talked about that for your oh. one ticket for one day, it was more than what you paid for your airfare to California. That so, killed me. <clears throat> that's wrong. But I, mean, I don't mind wrong. doing it every now and then because it gives my daughter joy like would I do it for myself no it doesn't give me that kind of joy like I don't like crowds and honestly like the way that you manage it by having the genie plus and like constantly you know cycling through those like you have to you have to be on top of it because if I was waiting and you know, like a 45 minute line to go on, like it's a a small world, I'd probably want to (laughs) like jump, you know, (laughs) like it's just really, yeah. And it was also funny for me because you have such nostalgia around it. And so you're like, oh, I want to go and it's a small world. And I'm just like, well, that's creepy. Well, look at that, you (laughs) know, know. like, and then I'm, I'm, I'm there in the little car with you and I'm like, stop being such a cynic. Like I'm, I'm so like (laughs) Gen X, like cynical, you know, but I'm like, why are the penguins wearing sombreros? You know, <laughs> um, but it's just funny because there's such like the rides have come so far and the yeah. new rides, like riding like web slingers and obviously the rise of the resistance, millennium Falcon, like any yeah. of those newer rides are just so well done that I'm like, why do you keep this other stuff around? Like, it's just such like, and why do people still wait in line for it? You know, I but know. that's just because I don't have that same, those same feelings. But for me, it's just, it's just a joy to like, it's a joy to give my kid joy, you know, yeah. and what I want it. But luckily she's just as joyous to be in places beyond Disney. <laughs> so yes, exactly. All the time. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's awesome. And I, I realize now like the time because we were over there and I don't know for people who are don't know this, but it was like Genie Plus was immediately available for us to use. So it was just a free, a free use for me for um, us to go on. It's a small world and there's 
Disney characters in our It's a Small World. I don't know about the Disney World one because I never wait in the line for that one. However, I realize now we never did Pirates and I think Disneyland Pirates is really fun. And that was one that I, I still to this day was like, coming home going, man, shoot, I didn't get them on our pirates. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I would have rather us gone on pirates than it's a small world. Trust me. But <laughs> anyways, yeah. hope, I am glad we definitely didn't get to anything. We didn't get to everything, but we did a number of things twice and that made the kids yes. really happy. So it was fun. Yeah. And, and for me, like getting to see galaxy's edge, I'm like, that's all I care about. And I it's know. funny because yeah. you guys, like we did the rides together and then you guys split off to get food and we spent some more time exploring galaxy's yeah. edge. We're in this like little store looking at all the little plushies and out of the corner of my eye, I see like the Mandalorian walking by with Grogu and his little sling. And I was, I was literally like, <gasps> and I like, <laughs> ran, ran a, like away from Hannah to get like in front of him because they knew he was like coming through that crowd. Yeah. And then I'm like, wow, you just totally left your kid to go see like a <laughs> character. And I'm saying character in quotes because it's obviously yes. not like the real thing. And then I'm like, well, she's she's 18. She'll find me. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, and then I got no. Some it's totally the way it is. And I mean, I think that's one of the things that Disney can ha- like do for anyone who's into media. Like, there's those moments of just like childhood giddiness that adults were so cynical and we're so busy and we're so stressed that we forget. And so sometimes I think that's what brings it home to me is, you know, like getting to see Dale, you know, like I'm like Dale and knowing that it's Dale and not Chip and I know how to figure that out. And, you know, seeing like him in our age, I'm saying him, but who knows what's under the costume, but engage (laughs) with us and like, you know, try to jump up on the curb and then we all have to clap for him because he made it, you know, little things like that. It's just fun. And it just brings this stupid little giddy childhood joy. (laughs) So that's probably, you know, what it's about for me, but yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's, it's the immersiveness of it. And that's why like we loved the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and Universal because we're such Harry Potter fans and to go and like see something brought to life that you'd only seen on a screen or in the pages of a book, you know, it's just fun to feel like you're part of that world for a little bit. So the escapism of that, you know, I definitely like it. It just like, to me, like just green out the crowds but luck I was yes. honestly really surprised that for a Saturday I mean I understand it's February and it was not President's Day weekend we obviously tried to avoid that on purpose yep. it wasn't too bad like except for that central no. area where there's like the carousel and a lot of the little kitty rides like that yeah. was like kind of crowded but everything else was really not too bad and, and, no. and was- you know I have had my moments at, at Walt Disney World where I'm just like why do people walk so slow and like how do I get around everybody <laughs> and and also we've often gone to Disney World in June uh, yeah. I think we've been there twice in June and once in September or October. So being in a place, I mean, I was actually cold, but being yeah, in a place where cold. I'm not mm-hmm. sweltering and wanting to pass out was also yeah. really a plus. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's always a positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any travel in general. <laughs> Low bar. So, yeah. I mean, I remember walking around Italy in 40 degrees Celsius temps and I was like, you know, how do you even appreciate anything anymore as your sweat's yeah. running into your eyes? But no, yeah, it's good. Well, I'm glad that you guys had an experience, you know, got to have an experience. I'm glad that I finally got to um, kind of take charge and share it with you. I think it was funny when you saw, you know, like the biggest thing I, I knew, you know, that I wanted you to see was how close together California Adventure and Disneyland are. And that's one of the reasons I've always liked that is because when we, when the girls were young, we used to do two or three day tickets in the parks and then we would go have a beach vacation for the other two or three days or we'd go somewhere else. And it's so nice being able to spend your week vacation not just doing Disney. And I feel like with Disney World, there are a lot of different parks and everything's so spread out. And then you want to do Universal as well that sometimes you're stuck going, oh, I use my entire week to go theme parks every day and that's just yeah. exhausting so um, that is one thing I really like about Disneyland is that it's you can do it on a shorter trip yeah and that was something that as soon as we walked into the Esplanade Hannah was like wow they're right there they're right across <laughs> from each other so it's yep. it, you know not even with any prepping that's what she that was her first Noticed. reaction so yeah I very and then much I, thank you for leading castle. us around Yay. and helping us you know, find our way and figure out the best ways to maximize our Genie Plus investment, which you had an $80 ticket. Oh, <laughs> my God. So, I mean, but just so everyone time, knows, that's what we paid. <laughs> if I had to pay that much 
you know, if I was paying 200 and some already just for the ticket, I forget how much the Genie Plus add-on was, but you're paying so much for the ticket that if you're only going one day, I would I would definitely still do Genie Plus because yeah, for sure. otherwise you're not fitting hardly anything in, you know, and I just, I can't imagine doing it otherwise. I mean, it, yeah, it pains me to have paid that much for tickets for sure, but yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we did it in the way that allows us to get the most out of our day. Yeah. Especially with the kids being into, you know, roller coaster rides and stuff. It definitely made a difference. So cool. Does it make it well, better that you spent 15 hours there? You really maximized it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I think for me, it was, I, I realized that I, I'm so spoiled with taking breaks that I forget we never do sit down restaurants and sit down eating. And so I didn't think in advance to book anything for us because it's not something I like to spend my money on because I always say, if you're in the parks, maximize your time. And then, you know, like little things like that. Yeah. And we always just do quick service, grab and go type food where you just sit quickly and shovel stuff yeah. into your mouth and then you're on the way. But I definitely realized that for all of us, it would have been really good to have a nice, you know, like sit down hour long <laughs> meal break. But we we figured it out. We we made it work. But that was some, the only thing I would say is that I have, it's been I mean, I'm, it's one of those things where you get so used to what you do that I forget what it's like to do a full day and you definitely need a sit down meal when you're doing that kind of full day. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I will say is that, you know, for all the Disney people that might listen to this, you know, we debated rope drop and, uh, Hannah, uh, Kim asked Hannah, what do you, how do you feel about like getting up early to get there for rope drop? And, and I think, Hannah was kind of like a hard no. Like I yeah. forget her exact phrase. <laughs> she, was like, she was like, I don't even remember what dislike she said. entirely. Like not excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not excited or something. Yeah. yeah. So, and I don't, you know, I don't blame her. Like she's just, yep. they're flying in. They've had a full week of college. They, you know, yep. don't feel like getting up. Well, at least mine didn't feel like getting up at six thirty or whatever to get there. But we we arrived right at 8.30 where the park it opens at 8 and I found it super easy like there was no crowd like walking in the I walked behind like maybe four people to get through security and then we went through the turnstiles it was like so easy versus the thought of being in a like column of people funneling into security with like people and are then all the around turnstiles. me because I and then the do not yeah. like crowds like that yep. really I would much rather miss out on something than than yep. have to kind of deal with that kind of crowd. So I was really happy that we were able to kind of thread that needle and and still have a really grateful day without having to be there. That well, and part of that was because we did have Genie Plus. We were starting at, I mean, for people who are Disney freaks, you'll know this, but we were starting at Disneyland, not California Adventure. Tamara was willing to pay for things like Radiator Springs, little things like that. There was there was a few reasons. Like, I knew the questions to ask, and once we figured out where it was, the priorities were, then we knew how to make it all work. So, so it worked out, but... Anyways, yeah. Well, so that was our little trip, and now we're back in our. I, we, Tamara, our our weather is so miserable. We're it's supposed to get to like twenty degrees overnight next week. And I'm like, why, why? That darn pucks of twenty, Phil. Yeah, it was like sixty degrees here when I got back, which was like insane. It was like a hundred degree switch basically. Yeah. And then, but like the other night, it was I, actually Saturday morning. I was going to meet a friend to go for a walk, and I woke up and I'm like, it's a real feel of eighteen. Do we have to walk or can we just meet for breakfast? <laughs> meet for, yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so I'm I'm in that kind of stage. But yeah, hopefully it will start to change. I think we are expecting some rain and or snow possibly this week, but I'm I'm I we didn't even have a bad winter and I'm still over I know. it. So yeah. I'll look forward to seeing you in sunny Arizona. In sunny in Arizona April. in April. Yeah. yeah. What do you and have I'm in going- between though? I am going to Florida at the end of March, so um, for a conference about cruises. So, and yeah. I am going to Vermont at the end of March, so I will okay. not be hitting the the palm trees. But <laughs> it's still one of my favorite states. You know, I just have such affection from it from growing up and going up there all the time because my sweet. grandmother and aunts and uncles went up there. So I'm going to go actually also do a conference, but also a little bit of exploring um, yeah, as well. That's awesome. So. Yay. Stay tuned for those things. Stay tuned. We'll check back in with you guys when we're next able to connect our schedules and get together again. All right. Take care. Safe travels. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs>